Hello everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, I will be explaining why free-falling objects fall at the same rate. A very common misconception a lot of people have is that an object that is heavier will fall at a faster rate compared to a lighter object. Now that is not true. The objects will actually fall at the same rate. Now before we jump into the lesson, if you have no idea what the term free fall means, please watch my video on gravitational acceleration and free fall, which explains what free fall is. Just for a brief explanation here, the term free fall here means to fall under the influence of gravity only, meaning they will fall with gravitational acceleration, where the value is about 9.81 meters per second squared. Now I have a video here where I have dropped two objects from the same height at the same time. You'll find that when the air resistance is negligible, they will all fall at the same rate regardless of their mass or weight. These two objects in question are a marker pen and a bottle of glue. And obviously, the bottle of glue is heavier. So most people would assume that the heavier object, which is a bottle of glue, will fall down much more quickly than the marker pen. Now let's watch what happens. You'll see that I release them at the same time from the same height and throughout the motion, they're both falling at the same rate, hitting the floor at the same time. Let's watch that again. Now this is only true when the air resistance is negligible, meaning that the weight of the object is great enough to overcome the air resistance easily. This does not apply when the air resistance is very high. For example, if you were to drop objects with a very large surface area with very little weight, for example, a piece of paper, a feather, or a leaf, or even if a parachuter was jumping, and a big parachute with a lot of air resistance, that also doesn't apply in that case. So the situation where the objects fall at the same rate only happens when the air resistance is negligible, where the weight is great enough to overcome the air resistance easily. So regardless of the mass or weight of the objects, they fall at the same rate. Now, in this case, both objects are not exactly free falling because although the air resistance is negligible, there is still a little bit of influence where the objects do fall at a rate that's slightly less than the gravitational acceleration. So if we truly want to observe free falling objects, we would have to drop the objects in a vacuum. Unfortunately, I do not have a video of objects falling in a vacuum chamber because I do not own a vacuum chamber or a vacuum tube. So if you'd like to watch a video of objects falling in a vacuum chamber, I've put a link in the description below which links to BBC's video featuring Brian Cox. He visited a facility where they dropped a bowling ball and a feather, first in air and then in a vacuum chamber, and you'll find that when the objects fall in the vacuum chamber, the bowling ball and the feather fell at exactly the same rate throughout the entire motion. The reason why this happens is because there is no air resistance, meaning there's no opposing force to impede the weight. Now, a lot of people, even though they may have watched that video, or even if they were to see it their own eyes, would question why. How is it possible that two objects with very different weights, like the bowling ball and a feather, could possibly fall at the same rate? Remember the earlier misconception I said? Even if people see this with their own eyes, they would still think that's not right. They will still assume that the heavy object should fall first, should fall more quickly than the object that is lighter. So this is what I'm going to address in this video. Now first, let's recall the concept of weight. Now on this slide, I have the formula that relates weight to mass, where W is the weight which we measure in newtons, m is the mass which we measure in kilograms, and g is the gravitational acceleration, or sometimes known as the gravitational field strength. The gravitational acceleration is in meters per second squared, while gravitational field strength is in newton per kilogram. The value of g, depending on the syllabus that you're studying, could be 9.8 or 9.81. Now, if we were to look at this formula, you should see a similarity between the weight formula with the force formula. 
So weight is essentially a type of force. They're both measured in Newton. M is of course the mass and they're both the same in this case. While G, the gravitational acceleration, is a type of acceleration. A just represents acceleration in general, so it could be a horizontal or vertical acceleration, whereas G is specifically acceleration caused by gravity. That's why it's known as gravitational acceleration. Now, to understand why objects will fall at the same rate in spite of their different masses and weights, let's first take a look at some horizontal motion and see how F equals MA apply in those situations. Now, say we have a situation where we have a person who is pushing a box to the right, like so. So this person is applying a force that is horizontal and moves the box from one point to another point. So when a force is applied, obviously there will be motion and this object would be moving with an acceleration that is the same direction as the person's force. And that's because the acceleration of the object depends on the force as applied. Now, what happens if this person is now pushing an object with greater mass? If this person was to be pushing the same amount of force on an object with greater mass, obviously the acceleration would be less because there's more of the object to try to move. So if you were comparing two objects with different masses and we apply the same amount of force in both cases, Obviously, they would be moving with different accelerations because the objects have different masses. The object with greater mass would have the force distributed in such a way to get all those matter to move. That's why they move at a slower rate. So if we were to do a comparison of the acceleration, that means if this was A1 and this was A2, obviously A1 would be greater than A2 if they have the same amount of force applied in this situation. So if we wanted to move both objects with the same acceleration, that means the object with the greater mass would require more force. Again, that makes sense, right? Because there's so much more of this object, there's so much more mass, it requires a significant higher force to make it move. So if we want both objects to move the same acceleration, Let's say, for example, for the sake of understanding this, if this was a mass of m and this was a mass of 2m, based on the formula of F equals ma, you should be able to see if you want both objects to move the same acceleration because this mass is double. Obviously, the force applied here also has to be double. So remember that the acceleration of the object depends on the resultant force. So in this case, we are of course assuming there's no friction on this smooth surface. So the force applied will cause the object to move with the acceleration of A. An object with greater mass requires a greater force to make the object move the same acceleration. So if we were to take this same understanding now and apply it to the following objects, you should be able to see that this now makes sense. Even though a bowling ball has significantly greater weight compared to the feather, it is also because it has a significantly greater mass. So the bowling ball has a greater weight because the greater weight is needed to make the greater mass move. When we compare the formula side by side, you can straight away see that the mass actually cancels the weight out, causing the value of G to be equal. So that's why both objects, regardless of their mass and weight, will fall at the same acceleration, which is g. Again, to understand, why is it that they both can fall at the same gravitational acceleration in spite of their different masses and weights? It's because the greater weight is needed to overcome the greater mass to make it move. Again, if we look at a horizontal motion, remember that greater mass requires greater force to keep it moving at the same acceleration. Smaller mass requires a smaller force. So if the objects are falling, a smaller mass requires a smaller force, which is the weight in this case. So that's why even if a bowling ball has a greater weight, it will still fall at the same gravitational acceleration as the feather in a vacuum chamber where there's no air resistance because of the greater mass. 
So even if you're dropping two objects like a marker pen and a bottle of glue, two stones of different masses, the different weights will still cause them to fall at the same gravitational acceleration because the weights have to overcome their masses. Greater weight, greater mass, smaller weight, smaller mass. So I hope this brief explanation has helped you understand why objects will fall at the same rate if they were free falling and a heavier object does not fall faster than a lighter object. So if you found this video to be educational and helpful, please click like and subscribe for more free physics lessons. Do check out my YouTube channel for video lessons on other topics you might find helpful. If you'd like to help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals, donations are welcomed at my coffee page, that's ko-fi.com slash physicsrocks. If you would like access to notes, quizzes, and syllabus updates, please visit my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!